Hey everyone, my name is Rushi Shah. I'm VP of Product Management here at YCharts and I am really excited for today. Thank you all for joining. And we also have Nick Majuli from uh, Ritholtz Wealth. Nick is Chief Operating Officer at Ritholtz and also the author of the of Dollars and, and Data blog. I know that's one of my personal favorites. I'm sure it is for a lot of you on the call today. So uh, Nick, thank you for joining us. Of course, thanks for having me, Rushi. Excited to talk about this. Yeah, excited to get into some some new functionality that we have on YCharts. And just before we get started, I did want to run through a few housekeeping items. Uh, for all of you on the call, you uh, will see a Q&A section or a Q&A uh, button at the bottom of your screen. So feel free to throw questions in there throughout the webinar. Uh, Nick and I will keep an eye on that. And then uh, we'll try and get to some of those during the webinar. But also we have a Q&A section at the end. Also, if you're on the call uh, or if you're registered for this webinar, we will be sending you a recording of the webinar after. So if you wanna rewatch a certain section or, or uh, catch the recording at a later date, uh, we will be sending that over to you. Also, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a lot of great videos on YouTube, just like this webinar. And you can, you can find a lot of great content there if you're looking to learn more about why charts or hear from, from great people like, like Nick uh, in some other videos too. We also have a, a little QR code on the slides. Feel free to take a picture of that or grab that QR code if you're looking to learn more about why charts and, and sign up for a free trial. You can, you can use that to do so. And lastly, please keep in mind that the content of this webinar is meant for educational purposes only and is not intended to be investment ad advice, nor is Y Charts acting as an advisor, advising party regarding client funds in any way. And with that, uh, let's, let's get going. So like I mentioned, really excited today to uh, introduce everyone on this call to proposals. It's the newest functionality on Y Charts. We are super excited for all of you advisors that are spending a ton of time with your clients and that that's a part of your day-to-day -day workflow and, and we're going to cover that a little bit and then we're also going to uh you know have a conversation with nick and talk through running impactful pro, uh, prospect meetings so learning a little bit more about what that process looks like uh best practices and and learn from nick a little bit from that front and then after that we will jump into y charts a bit and show you how this proposal functionality works and we'll also be able to uh, talk through a example situation with a with a sample client and, and run through that with all of you. And then, like I mentioned, lastly, we'll we'll close out with some Q and A with with all of you. All right. So, intro to proposals. Let's let's talk through why this is so important and why we're really excited about proposals here at Y Charts. If you're familiar with Y Charts, uh, this is kind of our our value proposition right here on this slide, and uh, we like to talk about this uh, as like a cycle or something that advisors go through when using Y Charts. I won't go through all components of here, but um, you know we are an investment research platform, and we also help with client communication. So uh, if you've been a longtime Y Charts user, you know we have a ton of tools around uh, things like uh, dashboard and monitoring. Uh, screening tools, portfolio analysis, security analysis, uh, integrations to pull in portfolios from other partners. And we do all of that to help you create visuals. Um, and these visuals include charts and uh, you know scatter plots, uh, different types of PDF reports. We release uh, PowerPoint presentations. But we also learned that a lot of the day-to-day -day for our uh, client client-facing advisors is running proposals really gaining new AUM by being able to run a report that takes where your prospect is currently and showing you showing them the value that you're providing as their advisor. So that's really where this Y charts proposal tool fits in. And we're excited to show you how you can do that using the tool. So before we get into the tool, Nick, I'd love to hear from you on running impactful perspective meetings. So uh, this is kind of the process, you know, some people have, have different processes on how they run this, uh, run this with someone that walks into their door or someone that is looking to invest their money. Nick, do you mind just running through this, this process or this process from going from a prospect to a customer? Yeah. So we, we call this the sales funnel internally um, at my firm and 
thinking about this, I mean, we use content marketing for step one, which is putting out blog posts, things that we can get into that in a second, but there's a lot of ways you can get leads, right? And, and there's, you can think of them as two big buckets. You either pay for the leads. And what do I mean by that? That could include, you know, paying for ad advertising, right? Just advertising your firm or advertising some piece of content you wrote. Um, you can get into referral networks, whether that's informal referral networks with like tax agencies, um, tax firms, things like that, or, or actual just uh, referral networks where you're actually, you have to give a portion of your revenue. Like there's the Schwab referral network, right? Where they would, they would send you clients, but you have to give up some of your, your revenue going forward. So that's kind of the paid side on the unpaid side. It's really just like organic, which is putting out blog posts, social media, any sort of LinkedIn posts, things like that to, to draw attention, whether that means you're showing off your expertise or just giving it a different opinion on something. And that's going to attract attention. That's going to get um, lead. So that's the beginning of the funnel, right? And so we use a CRM Salesforce to kind of manage all of that. Once once the person has reached out, that goes into Salesforce for us. Um, but it doesn't really matter where you're getting the lead from, how you're following up with the lead. You can literally just have an intake form on your website. You can have someone calling in and writing down information. There's a lot of different ways, especially if you're smaller, like going using a large CRM can be very expensive. So there's no wrong way to do this. It's just, you just have to get information, follow up and kind of go through the process, right? And so after that, you know, we get that lead that it gets assigned. And in our case, we assign that to an advisor that we think might be a good fit based on either location, based on their current workload, based on a, a host of factors. And then they will reach out to that, that lead and see, is this person a prospect? And so I like using the term leads and prospects because a lead is just someone who's reached out. You have no idea any information about them. You don't know if they're going to be qualified for any of your services. You don't know if it's a good fit. You don't know if they're even looking for the right thing. For example, um, you know, some of our leads come from, you know, watching Josh on CNBC when he's giving out stock picks, Josh Brown, our CEO, and they want Josh to do personal stock picks. And it's like, that's not what we, we do. We're not having our, our CEO day trade your account, basically. And so someone might get the wrong impression. We have to say, hey, like we do offer all these other services. We just won't give you that particular thing that you want. And so it's about figuring out, are they a good fit for us? And then are we a good fit for them? So it's a two-way conversation. I, I think you have to think about that. There's a lot of people that just say, oh, well, they have a lot of money. I should just service them and I should have them as a client. But you have to really think about, is this person a good fit for us? Just, a, just as much as are we a good fit for them, right? Because if not, if it's not a good fit, you're going to spend more time on that client, more energy. It's going to be tougher for you just personally. And then they're more likely to leave too. And if they leave, that's obviously, that's, that's not profitable for you as a firm. So you got to think about the bigger picture. You have to think a little bit more long-term when you're doing that. And it it is tough to sometimes sometimes turn down people who, who could be good clients in one manner, but they're maybe not... Um, in other manners. And so that's kind of the, the way to think about that. But so kind of going through that, you get a lead, you have that initial prospect meeting, you're kind of just filling them out, you want to really let them speak, let them do the talking. Um, and, and from there, you're going to kind of learn and say, okay, is this a good fit? And then once you go from there, that's where we go to this prospect meeting, right, this pitch meeting. And that for what we use, we, we come up with a financial plan. We have a proposal. And historically, we've had to create these proposals ourselves because we've looked on the market and there are not that many great proposal tools. And I'm very excited that YCharts has this because it, it does allow for a lot, of, a lot of functionality that a lot of the tools don't have. Some of them are way too customizable to the point where it's, it's impossible to use. And there's some that just don't have enough customization. I think there's this kind of Goldilocks zone. I think YCharts is hit. And we're going to get into that, you know, in terms of you as the administrator, if you're like, hey, I want our proposals to look a certain way across all our advisors, that's something that can be very useful. And we'll talk about some of those controls as well. But during the proposal meeting, you're going to be talking through, you know, their plan, kind of their what your vision is for them, their financial plan going forward. And you're going to be saying, hey, here's the portfolio options we offer. And here's how we think about investing. And here's what you have now. And here's, I mean, there's different ways you can do this, right? In this case, and in, in especially with the Y charts tool, they'll say, hey, here's your current portfolio based on your statements, you'll put in their holdings, etc. And here's what we're proposing. And you can kind of showcase the differences where there's benefits, where there's costs, and kind of going through that with them so that they have a better understanding. I think it's it's really scary to have like your life savings going from one allocation to another, especially if it's like a larger change. A lot of times it probably won't be, but if it is, you need to kind of explain what's happening, why you're doing it, and kind of tell that story that really allows you to kind of um, have a successful um, prospect meeting. So I hope that kind of gets gets through that, and we're going to kind of dig into this a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. And, and a couple of things I wanted to touch on there, Nick, um, just on that first part, you talked about gaining those, uh, what's a lead and, and turning that into a prospect. 
Can you touch a little bit on how Ritholtz Wealth does a great job of this? Like I, I personally love all the blog posts that, you know, you, uh, Ben Carlson, Michael Vanek, all of you put out. And I feel like, you know, your brand on your blog is more about data and more about really running into uh, looking at analytics to look, look at a market in a different way. How do you use that brand to then maybe gain different leads than potentially someone that might be reading Ben's blog or Michael's blog? Yeah. So every, every lead source, as I call them, have different, have a different audience, right? And in, not just in terms of age, in terms of income, in terms of wealth, but they're even just in terms of mindset, right? So I find, for example, in my case or with Ben's blog, especially like we're both very data driven and these, a lot of these people are do-it-yourself investors. So some of these people are not going to reach out to us as leads, like actually a good portion of them because they're trying to do it themselves. Why are they sitting there learning about all the data if they're just going to outsource it to someone? And there are some people that love reading about that and they still want to outsource. They want the peace of mind, right? And so it is a service you're really selling. You have to remember that you're selling a service, right? And so to think about like the people that, you know, that are reading and trying to understand every single thing about markets and, and portfolio construction, all that, those may not be the people that want to hire an advisor. And so thinking of thinking that through, like, what's the type of content that works and doesn't work and, and figuring out where your niche is in terms of attracting clients. I think for a lot of people, what I find, at least with the leads that I get to the firm these are people that are, they know their stuff. They, they're actually very interested in investing, but they're just tired of doing it themselves. And so it's this like, I should stop at this point. I have more money. Like, and we look through their plan. It's like, yeah, you're going to be fine. Even if you double your spending and it's like, people are still worried. I'm like, you don't need to worry about this. Like we can take care of this for you. And I think it's that peace of mind. That's the real value add. So think about that in the greater context of like, why is someone reaching out to you? So when you're running a prospect meeting, you want to figure out what's that pain point. They're they're talking to you for a reason. They're not talking just because, oh, I, may, I guess I should talk to an advisor. No, there's a pain point. There's something there. And you have to figure out what it is. They may tell you, oh, it's because of X, but just let them talk more. Let them kind of explain their story. X may, it may sound like it's X, but it's actually something else. And as you, as they kind of reveal it, you'll actually realize, oh, it wasn't that it was this other thing. And so people will give off an initial impression like, oh, I'm, I need an advisor because, you know, um, I just, I, I don't know what I'm doing with my money. And maybe that's, that's part of it, but that's probably not it. It's probably something else that's driving. And maybe they had a spouse that, that said, Hey, I, I think you're taking too much risk and we need to talk to someone, a professional. And so they don't want to admit that upfront. And so you'll hear about that through the process. And so it's a, it's about kind of letting them talk really. I mean, you know, I think a lot of uh, advisors, what the key is to let them open up and let, let just let, just listen and ask questions that are kind of trying in a way that's really getting at the core issue. And, and if you can solve that issue, a lot of times, you know, if you can't solve it, like you're gonna be like, Hey, like, you know, you're great, but I don't know if we can do much for you in this particular circumstance. And you have to be honest. And, and that, and that's the key having that honesty and saying, Hey, actually I think you'd be better with like an hourly planner or better doing this. That's going to probably even get you referrals because you're being honest with someone's like, wow, you didn't just try to take my money. Wow. Like that's actually something that's valuable and that that's value in itself. So just think about that in, in the, in the grand scheme of this whole thing. Definitely. That, that makes a lot of sense. And, and a couple of things on, on that proposal part, which I'd love for you to touch on and, and kind of double clicking into that one meeting where you're really trying to run that proposal report. Can you talk a little bit about communication with that, with that prospect? You talked about, you know, listening being really important, letting them talk. How do you then turn the, the conversation into you communicating your value once you've listened to them and really learned about them? Yeah. So usually those are going to be different conversations, right? Like that, that letting them talk is usually the, the meeting before that first meeting you have where you're trying to get their core issues. And then you have to take that digest and then present the story that you're saying, here's the future, right? And so for example, it's this proposal that we're going to put together. I came up with an RIA called a dollars in data, you know, wealth management or whatever. So that's the one we're going to be using here. We're not using Ritholtz, but um, let's just imagine we had a, a client who, you know, there were 75% stocks, but you're, as you're talking to them, you realize they're so worried about money. They're worried about risk. They're worried about the markets crashing, all this stuff. And you're looking at their spending. You're kind of, you know, balancing everything out. And you're like, you know what? We can reduce their stock exposure, like which would reduce their, you know, the day-to-day -day volatility of the portfolio. And they'll still make it, right? And you got to be able to tell that story, right? And so if you realize that they're kind of having these feelings, that, you know, they're kind of worried and stuff, you want to reduce that worry. And so in this case, we're saying, okay, we went from a 75, 25 to now a 60, 40. And maybe this isn't a, this is actually very analogous to what's happening in markets probably today, because when the yields were at basically zero, you had to take on more stock risk. But now that yields have gone up, you know, treasuries, you know, treasury bills are paying, you know, 5%. 
you can take, you can own more bonds now, right? So you can move from a 75-25, which was probably, you know, the new 60-40s, they said it was the 75-25. Now you can actually get yield in a 60-40. And so we're back to kind of the old world or the more traditional way of things as it's been over the last few decades. And so this is an example of, of a type of proposal you might be actually um, coming up with right now with people who weren't really in bonds. Now, you know, uh, bond yields have gone up. Maybe, you know, people should reduce stock risk. And it's, it's a question. It's a, something you have to go with every person. It's going to be individual. But I think this is the exact type of um, proposals that are that you're going to be seeing in the future. There's going to be more bonds that you probably than you would have seen in the like two year, two three years ago when you're like, hey, we can't get yield on this. We have to take more stock risk to make this work. So that's that's some of the things to talk about there. Definitely. And Nick, one question that I, I'm seeing come in that you know we thought about this a lot when we were thinking about this proposal tool because we want to give. Uh, you know, we want to give the advisor the ability to tell their own story, but also do it in a compliant way. So the question that came in is with the new SEC marketing rule, what type of safeguards do you have when you're when you're running these client meetings? And I'll touch on the Y charts part when we go through the Y charts tool. But what, what are you thinking about from a compliance standpoint to make sure that, you know, all of your advisors are telling the same story and there there's things that they're doing that are compliant with that SEC marketing rule? Yeah. So a lot of this comes down to kind of what performance are we showing? Like, is it net of fees, right? That was one of the big things, or I'm sorry, I'm gross of fees, you know? So you're including the fee, you're including the client fee in there. So like, here's what your portfolio would have grown to including our fee. So not, you know, before you could have said, oh, here's without fees, don't worry about fees. Like here's their, what your portfolio would have done in our models, but now you have to include fees. So there's a lot of these little things that, that kind of, are you you're going to include and our CCO is the one who like goes over that gets all the disclosure language locked in but it's really about showing the right performance figures and saying hey this is what your performance would have been over the past you know 10 years if you had been invested in this model and you know including our fee at your uh, tier rate. I mean, and, and honestly, we actually use our highest fee, even though it's some our we might have a prospect that's going to be at a lower tier rate because maybe they have more assets. Um, we would still be using our highest fee and, and kind of using that as, as the example. Just so like even in the scenario where you're charged the highest fee we charge to any client, that um we would be showing that. So I think that's the thing to think about. And I, I recommend, you know, talking to your CCO if you don't have one, like, you know, just doing research on this and um and talking to people, other people in the industry. There's a lot of you know people you can reach out to that will uh, discuss some of these issues. And I think that's a, a lot of that is on performance, right? And then the other thing too is, you know, this is, you know, don't use testimonials. We try not to use them. I think now, I, I can't remember exactly, but there is a way where you could use a testimonial, but you have to do it in the right way. And I just, we just avoid them altogether. We don't say like, hey, you know, this is the greatest firm ever, you know, signed client. We don't do that because historically it's, um, it hasn't been, it hasn't gone over well with the SEC. And even though now I think there is some ways you can use it, we just avoid it altogether. So, um, just just keep that in mind with with what you're doing and what you're saying in the proposal. So we're not putting like client uh, testimonials in our proposals. We're making sure all the performance is compliant, making sure we're including fees in there. Those are some of the big ones um, that will get there. Awesome, awesome. So uh, let's let's go through the the Y charts proposal tool and let's let's do a little bit of a demo. And and Nick, I want to go through uh, basically just a sample person. Let's just call them X Y Z. I think within Y charts, I call that person John Smith. So John Smith walks into your door at, at, you know, ODAD Wealth Management and wants to talk to you, Nick, the advisor. So here's a couple things that you learned in that first meeting. You talked about really listening to the person in that first meeting and learning about them, right? You could do this in different ways, like asking them questions, doing a risk uh, tolerance questionnaire, et cetera, to, to really know where they stand in their lives and where they currently are invested. Um, let's just talk through this example. So they're, they're 50 years old. They would like to retire in 15 years. You've learned based on listening to them that their risk tolerance is probably, you know, something along the lines of balanced, which, um, in your mind might mean like a 60, 40 stock to bond allocation, or at least 60% invested in, in stocks. Um, and then a couple other things the client cares about capital preservation. Uh, they really want to take advantage of the high yield environment, like you mentioned, Nick. Um, also, they want to invest in large cap equity. Maybe that's kind of their their preference, or maybe that's your preference that you've talked to them in that first meeting. Lastly, a higher dividend yield income. So um, we've kind of learned this in the first meeting and also 
you know, the way you run your, your shop, Odad Wealth, um, this sample firm. And I think I've, I've learned that a lot of advisors run, run their advisory firms this way, where they have these model portfolio strategies. So you have these five model portfolios, but you know that um, the balanced allocation model that you have is best for this client. So Nick, anything else here that you're seeing that kind of uh, tells you a certain direction or the way you want to run that proposal pitch? Yeah. I mean, I think we, I kind of covered this in the last slide. I kind of jumped ahead a little when we were talking about the <laughs> 75, 25 versus the 60, 40, but yeah, if you're, if you're seeing someone come in with a much higher equity portion, they're like, yeah, well, bond yields have gone up. I, maybe I should be investing in bonds. And so they, you know, bonds got killed in 2022 because yields went up and especially as quickly as they went up. And so Obviously, bonds can still decline if yields continue to go up and that we don't know the future, but there's a lot of expectations that say yields might go up slightly or, you know, kind of be flat. That's kind of the expectation right now. And they expect them to be lower in, you know, a few years. But I mean, obviously, no one knows the future. So it's like you have to kind of try your best. And so obviously moving into bonds, there is some more risk if if yields were to continue up. But we're not trying to predict the future. We're saying, hey, you know, yields are at least higher and we have to try and, you know, cash in on that while we can. And so... Um, yeah, I think this is a, a perfect example of someone who might be walking and now and saying, hey, should I be moving to a higher yield? I mean, they probably have some money in a high yield savings account. Maybe they're owning treasury bills if they're a little more sophisticated, but kind of walking them through this would be would be really helpful. Awesome. Awesome. So within I'm, I'm going to go into Y charts now and let's let's run through some stats um, to to run this proposal report. So right now, this is the dashboard. Um, I. I branded this into your your firm colors, like you know, green, black, gray. You could do that, by the way, by going into your account settings and then going into report branding. So within here, I can uh, put in my logos for the reports. I could change the colors. I could change the custom disclosure if you wanted your compliance team to provide you that language. Um, you could do all that right here in your account settings. But now that we are in Y charts, you know, you know, we love data just like you do, Nick. So let's go into comp tables and let's look at um, let's look at that portfolio that John brought in versus the one that we're going to pitch pitch to to John. So you already talked about things like um, stock to bond allocation, which we have here. Uh, we talked a little bit about that long term fixed income exposure. Can you can you shed a little bit of light on a few of these other metrics that we we might want to highlight within our proposal report, like max drawdown, value at risk, yield, and and sharp? Yeah. So if, if you're if you have a client, obviously that's like worried about you know volatility and things like that. Max drawdown is great because you're going to say, hey, this is you know at least historically over the last ten years, you know this is how much you know at at the worst point you would have been down from from your peak portfolio value, in which obviously is twenty six percent with the current portfolio, twenty one percent. So it's not, it's not a, ma a major change, but it could be enough to, you know, have someone be like, okay, that's a little bit, that's not as bad. And so that maybe it'll prevent them from overreacting. And so that's the key. It's like how much of a drawdown and, and how much that matters. And so kind of getting that locked in. Um, you can look at stuff like value at risk. Obviously, VAR is really tough because like on a monthly basis, like, oh, on a monthly basis, you know, maybe you'll lose 4%, right? In like 95% of cases. Of course, there's like the March 2020s of the world where, you know, value at risk gets thrown out the window. But for the most part, there's there's things you can use that are at least helpful, at least in the interim. Um, another thing, obviously, dividend yield. That's a, a standard measure that people if people care about dividend income and they're kind of hyper focused on it. That's something you can talk about if they're really like you know focused on seeing how much money's coming in the door. That's another thing you can look at. And then lastly, uh, sharp ratio. That's something where you're like, hey, you know, what's the risk adjusted return we have of this portfolio relative to something else? And in this case, they're basically the same. So it's saying, even though, you know, we are moving to a much uh, less risky portfolio, the risk adjusted returns are still roughly equivalent, which is which is good. So um, and we can talk about these in, in more depth, but this is just like high level ways, different metrics you can think of. And you can obviously there's a huge metric set, obviously, that, you know, Y charts has so many things, which, you know, things probably I don't even understand, you know, beyond me, like tech goals and things like that, which I'm like, I don't even look at that stuff, but there's all sorts of measures in here that are really useful. And if you, if there's certain ones you want, they, I, I can almost guarantee they have them, right. Especially if they're, if they're common, of course, but you know, um, so that's the key here is like figuring out what's the story you want to tell. Um, and, and as a, and I also, this is a cool thing I found out in, in the process of, you know, us discussing this is like, you can determine like, hey, what options are available for advisors. So if you don't want advisors showing like your advisor advisory team talking about certain metrics, you can 
um, you can do, you have some control over that, you know, which is nice. And so as a, if you're thinking about like, oh, hey, I have 30 advisors telling stories out there and I have no idea what they're saying, or I don't know which modules are using and stuff like that. You have a little, you have a lot more, um, you know, flexibility and control over that story, um, which is, which is nice. And I think for a lot of people that is like, if you start thinking about it from a very high level, as you're trying to grow a firm, you're like, you want to be telling as consistent of a message as possible. Obviously every advisor is different with their approach and how they talk to clients and all that. But um, you want to try and be as consistent as possible with the core messaging and like how you talk about investments. So, yeah, definitely, Nick. And we can we can touch on that. And that's a that's a good segue to uh, talking about this new tool that we released to support proposals called Talking Points. So um, Talking Points is the ability to create these these commentary or, or these uh, specific discussion items that you wanted to use for your prospect meeting. So I have a bunch on my account. If you're brand new to Y charts, what we've done for you is we've already added five of these on your account. So you can go and see some samples. You could also go into this create new section and click on new from template. And we've added uh, 30 or so different types of example talking points. And uh, for the sake of this webinar, I already created uh, you know, five or six of these to talk through the metrics that we just covered in the comp table. But let's go ahead and, and create one from scratch just to show you what these talking points are, are all about. So I'm gonna start from uh, a template and let's, let's cover sharp ratio. Nick, you mentioned how that's a risk adjusted return metric. And I'm gonna start from this template and we're gonna create this one and let's call it sharp ratio comparison. And so you'll you'll notice what you could do once you once you label that you can name or you can actually pick the metric you want to highlight. Nick, like you mentioned, we have over four thousand different metrics. Whether it's allocation metrics you want to cover, or market cap metrics, or uh, risk metrics, returns, ESG. I mean, we you can really shape your proposal report how you like uh, shaping it. So it doesn't have to be attached to a specific portion of that portfolio. We want to kind of open the door for you to make that decision. So once you've chosen that metric, then we have these three different designs, which we can show you within the PDF report. Um, the the one called number with text, that's kind of our most, most basic one where it'll highlight the number and then let you provide commentary for that number. So let's go with that one. And then in here, we just have some general text already in there. You can edit this or change this. Uh, but for the time being right now, it, it kind of just talks through what sharp ratio means and and uh, kind of a definition because you know us as advisors or people that are in in the finance industry or wealth management industry we know what sharp ratio is but a prospect of yours that may not ever look at investing or not understand it you really want to define what this metric means to them but um, aside from this Nick is there anything else you'd want to potentially add within this talking point? Yeah. So for sharp ratio, I mean, honestly, I probably wouldn't put sharp ratio in front of a prospect, but I love it. I'm just a technical person. So let's just, I love it for the webinar. Um, but yeah, something I would add is like sharp ratio is looking at upside and downside risk. And so the only risk you really care about is the downside. And so we're not going to say it like that. We'll say, you know, sharp ratio looks at both upside and downside risk. So if you wanted to just consider downside risk, um, you should, you know, look at the maybe sort Sortino ratio, or there's other ways of looking at this max drawdown is good for that as well. So you might want to, you know, define that, put that language in there a little bit, just to let people know that, you know, it's not necessarily that the, the sharp is the, the best measure of, of downside risk, you know? And so, that's just one simple example of something you can add. Um, but yeah, whatever. And this is the thing, like this is the, the beauty of this is like, you can have your compliance team go through and put in the exact language they want. You know, uh, Ycharts provide some boilerplate language, but you can say, you know what? I really want to take this and and make it customized to us. And we want to say these specific terms and make sure everything's compliant, you know, et cetera. And so I think that's where you can really kind of start making your proposals like scalable across your firm, right? And so that's the that's the beauty of this. Yeah, definitely. Like you mentioned, Nick, we can actually lock this whole page down for if if you're, you know, on the compliance side or at the at the admin side of things. And then we can let all the advisors that are spending their time out on the field and meeting with clients, they might have, you know, 30 of these to choose from that are already compliance approved and and they're there for the advisor to choose and highlight, but they can't necessarily edit the text. So uh, that is something that's great uh, from a compliance standpoint. And and just to touch on a few other things that I've heard, I you know I've talked to a bunch of advisors about this functionality. Some of them like talking about their their thoughts on 
on this specific metric. Or if you're talking about stock allocation, maybe they want to say, you know, I'm overweight stocks or our firm believes you should be overweight stocks for this reason. So they might want to talk about it in that vein, or maybe you can use this as a marketing opportunity to say uh, something along the lines of we highlight risk because uh, for our firm and and for our conversation, risk is really important. So really, the world is your oyster here in terms of what kind of text you can add in here to create that that talking point. So I'm going to yeah. go ahead and save this down. Yeah, another thing Sorry. I want to add with this is like, you know, I'm imagining a world where we send this proposal to our advisors and the advisors create them. I mean, you can also have a team that just really pumps out these proposals and become experts in this tool, right? I mean, because right now there's, it's not a big learning curve, but there's a slight learning curve with even learning how to learn any new technology, right? And so it's like, if you're like, you know what, maybe we have a proposals team. And so once they, you know, the, maybe the advisor talks with, you know, a client service associate or someone who puts together the proposal, sends it back to them. And so the advisor continue focusing on, you know, the highest value add activities, which might be something related to, um, you know, talking with more prospects, et cetera. So there's a lot of different ways you can model your firm and you have to kind of figure out what works for you. Um, I think if in my firm, we would actually have the advisors create the proposals because everyone has like a different, you know, style and how they present and what the, whether they want to focus more on risk or, or allocation, et cetera. But just it's thinking about that, the custom, you know, how much custom, um, customization there is, is really the, is the key here. You, there's a lot of different ways you can use this tool and that's what makes it uh, so interesting. Yeah. And another thing to touch on that, Nick is, you know, a lot of times people come to Y charts and uh, they use a tool like this and it might be a little daunting to that learning curve. Like you talked about, you actually have a support contact here at Y charts that will walk you through this and set this whole thing up for you. So you could just set up one call with them. They'll teach you how to use the talking points. They'll ask you which metrics you want to add in here. And then they'll even help you create the proposal report itself. So um, you're not alone in this. Reach out to us. We can help you create all of this if, if it seems uh, like a lot of work for you. Um, so let's now that we've created that talking point, let, let's go ahead and create that report. So if you're not familiar with the report builder, this tool, we released this earlier this year. It's really cool. It allows you to literally drag and drop different sections within the report. Uh, for this example, I'm going to go ahead and and just uh, let's create a blank one and let's do a comparison, which allows you to say, here's where you are right now and here's where we want to take you. And so I can click comparison report and let's start creating this. And the way you turn this PDF report into a proposal report is the proposal modules. And what that proposal module allows you to do is pull in those talking points that we just created into PDF format. So I'm going to start by, let's add a cover page because uh, that's a good way to, you know, just like a nice little title page that'll have your, your title, your firm name, your logo, all of that. We'll start with that. And then let's add in that proposal module. For this example, uh, we do have two different types of proposal modules. A half page one is more so if you want to weave it into other sections of the PDF report, which I have an example ready to show you of that. Uh, but for this one, let's let's start off with uh, with that full page talking point module, which will allow you to add in talking points into the report. And then let's close out with some other sections. We have a lot of great stuff in the report builder. We have, you know, performance modules, uh, cumulative return, drawdown, risk, stress test, um, allocations, and then we have some cool disclosure modules. We also have some modules to be able to pull in charts or scatter plots or other saved items that you've created in Y charts. If you want to add that into uh, your your PDF report, you could do that here too. So um, Nick, what else what else do you think we should add into this proposal report that we're creating? Yeah, I would do something related to um, asset allocation, any sort of al yeah, that that would be great. Put that in there. Um, let's see what else we have in here. Uh, maybe something related to uh, maybe let, let's do something with risk in there. Maybe risk reward. We throw that in there. Um, and then let me see what else do you guys have? I know we're going to put the talking points in there. That's where we're going to talk about sharp, et cetera. But I know you guys have other things we can throw in here. Obviously, um, wait, wait, are the disclosures already included or do you have to include that? I can't remember this piece of it. Is that usually yes. at the end? Yeah. So we have a few different disclosure options. We mm -hmm. have a custom disclosure module, which mm -hmm. I, I showed you how you can edit your disclosure and that will just add that in there. We also just released this really cool dynamic disclosure, which is kind of like a one size fits all. Like you just throw that in and it and it grabs everything to make make that report, uh, you know, very disclosed from a, a standardized return standpoint, from a 
market definition standpoint, from a security uh, definitions, all of that. It kind of includes all of it in there. So I'm going to throw yeah. that, throw that yeah, dynamic. Let's put that in there. Yeah, I think that's great. Yeah, let's just go with this. I think unless there's anything else you think we should be adding, I think cover page, obviously disclosures are always necessary. And then just like talking through a handful of the talking points, which we'll, we'll put in there, right? I mean, of course, you know, we could make this much more expansive. This is a very short report, but you know, this is a one hour webinar. And so <laughs> Yeah. And what we've learned is when you're talking with clients, you know, you want to keep it simple and straightforward. Right. And that's that's what this talking point section is all about. So within the talking points module, um, we could we could call this something instead of proposals, we could call it like important metrics to know or something like that. Um, and then and then we could start adding in those those talking points that we created. So you have two options here. I, I toggled this on so we can pick these talking points from now. You could also toggle this off, which um, is more so. So if you want to run the same proposal for like 50 different prospects and maybe your talking points differ based on which proposal you're running, you can select these while you're generating the report rather than in this example, we're going to select these now because we're creating this specific report for John. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on edit talking points, which is going to open this menu here of all the talking points that you've created. Um, let's let's pull in some of those that that we had in here. Um, so we have stock allocation. Yep. Long term exposure was one, if I remember correctly. Um, there was, I think sharp, it was sharp. Sharp was in there. Uh, dividend yield was in there. And All right. I think yeah, yeah. And, and there's uh, up to four on each page. So. If you wanted to select four, it'll fit nicely in one page. If you wanted to add more, it'll just continue on to the next next page. And what's what's really cool here is you can actually edit these talking points on the fly. So now I have this text right here that I've already saved within that talking points page, but I can also go in here and edit it for this specific report if I wanted to as Question, well. So can we, as like the admin, can we lock down those talking points language as like, a, if I was like in compliance, I'm like, I don't want the advisors going in there and just kind of putting what they think something is, right? So we, we, have, yeah. the, we have the ability to kind of lock down or not lock down, right? Certain things, right? Exactly. So what okay. I could do is I could, uh, we could basically lock this, this pencil icon down. So mm -hmm. if you, Nick, are the compliance person, you wanted to set up these talking points, and so you would have the edit ability, but everyone else at the firm would not be able to edit these. And so they'd be able to just add them to the report. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's submit those and you'll notice it's all firm branded and, and I think we're, we're ready to go ahead and, Wait, and generate uh, quick, this. Qu quick question. So if let's say I wanted to add a page after the report page that like talks about my firm, like just general text and stuff, there's like a module in there for that, I'm guessing as well. Right. Yeah, yeah. We don't have, obviously, so, we don't have that built out yet, but I just want to make sure, like, because people probably want to talk about their firm and the history, and they can put that somewhere in there. So, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So let's say we wanted to add a page here. Um, mm -hmm. Let's go back to the modules. We have something called full page image, which mm -hmm. it's, you could upload any image, but you could also upload any PDFs. So if you have a firm, you know, 10-page PDF that runs everything from, like, a firm overview uh, you know, talk through like what you, team you're going to be working with, which I actually have an example of that right here, uh, where I've uploaded a sample PDF report here with like a nice little cover page that's branded um, a little bit about about the firm, a little bit about, you know, the benefits of working with with Oded Wealth Management um, and then the team. So, Nick, I put your picture in here, but you can talk yeah. about the team you're going to be working with um, more about you as mm -hmm. the advisor and a lot of this is you know for that pitch meeting you want to make sure that they know who they're working with and, and what services you offer and then mm -hmm. after that we go right into that proposal report right so now we have some of our standard risk and return metrics and then we run into some of those talking points here and this is that half page one i was referring to where you could talk through things like stock allocation and exposure and then have like the full asset allocation breakdown right under, underneath it. So um, this is an example of that PDF upload that you that you're referring to. Yeah, and this this is obviously more comprehensive than the one we just created. But if we want, we can show them the you know the the shorter version one as well. Um, yeah, let's let's do that. So 
This is the shorter version we just created. I'm going to go ahead and, and save this down. And then let's let's generate it right from here. So you could generate it from the report builder. You could also generate it from the portfolio page. But um, right here, I'll, I'll just pick my primary security, which is John Smith's current portfolio. And then I want to compare that to the uh, balanced allocation model that we were looking at in that table. And we can go ahead and, and run that uh, John Smith proposal here. And we're running this for John. Let's generate. So it'll quickly create uh, a PDF output for you. So if I click right here, here's the output of that report we just we just created. It has that cover page. Then it has these these talking points. And you'll notice for this one, it's a full page, and we also have that sentence we added during the webinar of you know sharp ratio is for upside and downside, but also we have Sortino for downside. Mm -hmm. Then you have the rest of the report. So these are other sections where, you know, if you want to really dig into the data, you could you could run through these like asset allocation, risk reward sections, um, and then here's our nice long disclosure to be to be very compliant when you're running these reports. Wow, they define everything. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, we have quite a bit in here. Um, this is all, you know, based on feedback that we've gotten from from advisory firms on on what they want to to be compliant within this report, which is which is great. Yeah, I just love how this is already built into the Y charts ecosystem because if you're already putting your models in there, you're putting like one it, the the hard work is getting that all in there. Once it's in there, though, it's like now you can just scale this thing, and that's kind of really cool. So. Um, I think that's where the value add here. So if someone who's already using Y charts, it's just more value add. They don't have to do anything because all their stuff's already in there. So I think that's what's pretty cool here. Um, yeah, and and just touching on that that process of us helping you get everything in there. Um, you know this this example I showed with these PDF uploads, we actually created this in PowerPoint format for you. So if you didn't have that marketing material and you wanted to use a template, if you go to support right here, we have. Uh, something called proposal branding guide. And it's literally a, a PowerPoint presentation you can download and put in your own firm information and then upload it right into this report builder. So that's a nice little way to have some of that marketing material right in here. All right, so uh, let's let's answer some questions. Let me, I'm gonna take a look at the Q and A here. Um, let's see. Yeah, there's a handful. Yeah, so I see a question about the insert deck option and portrait mode um, versus landscape mode. So we do have a, uh, a landscape version of the report, not quite for the proposal modules yet, but we are working on making landscape versions too. So if you prefer to use landscape rather than portrait, you'll be able to do that pretty soon. For the time being, the, por uh, the proposal report is just in uh, portrait mode. So it's more of a a vertical view. Nick, I, I see a question for you. What are what are top metrics you use to compare portfolios? Yeah, so I'm not an advisor, so I'm not the one that's actually presenting these things. I'm the one who's like helping the system scale. But if I if I were to do this, right, like the things I would care about, I obviously care about drawdown. Um, I care about historical returns. Um, I also care about like. I, don't know, I mean, I do. I, I don't care about risk adjusted, even though we talked about Sharp a lot today. I don't care about that as much, but I think those are the big ones I look at. It's like, okay, what returns are you getting? What's the drawdown, right? And then even like worst month or worst three month, like you got to think like, what's the max pain? I think max pain is a, is an idea that's actually very relevant because like, you know, like what happened in, I think now we, it's, it's so, I mean, this is not good, but I mean, it's good in the sense that we have data, but like March, 2020, as terrible as it was, how did you feel during that period? Because everyone remembers that any person walking into your office right now, they had money during that period, whether they were invested or not, it's another question. But if they were invested, they kind of have a feeling. And so we don't have to be like, oh, remember the crash of 1987? Like, no, no, one, like very few people remember that or had money invested then. But a lot of people remember March 2020. So it's really easy to, to dig into that moment of max pain, max uncertainty, you know, the world shutting down, oil goes negative. Like there's all these things that happen at the same time. And I think 
really digging into how did they react then is going to be very indicative of like kind of how you, um, what proposal you give them uh, amongst other things. Obviously, you, you know, risk tolerance questionnaires matter. All those things matter as well, but really getting into their feelings and their thoughts and what were you thinking every day? And like, especially like, it, it also depends on their industry. What industry are they in? Were they someone who could work at home? You know, all those people that could work at home weren't as badly affected as the people that had to physically go into a location or who maybe work in the restaurant industry, for example. So thinking about these things, um, that, that's the type of stuff I like to look at when I'm thinking about risk, thinking about reward and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and talking about, you know, March, 2020, we have a, something called quick flows here that allows you to run quick analyses just to show, show you how easily you can, you can run that within Y charts. I could pull up John Smith's portfolio versus this balanced allocation one. And then we have a comparison, uh, like basically view where you could click on performance chart. And then from here, you could go ahead and pick that exact time frame. So let, we could just look at 2020, for example, and look at that drawdown and compare and contrast those two models. And then you could throw this into that proposal report if you wanted to as well. If someone asked, I'm assuming the proposal is presented to the prospect. Yes. Yeah. You would, that's when you would, you would create the proposal and then present it to them. Um, this would obviously be before, you know, before they're, while they're still deciding if they're going to become a client, I think that's the time to use it. Someone asked, can we save preferences within the, the report builder? The answer is yes. So, uh, when I was in the report builder and I created that report, I was able to save that down and now it's on my account and you can also share that report. So if you wanted to uh, create a proposal report with your settings saved in there, you can run that report as many times as you want. It's saved on your account and you can run it on different portfolios and you can, like I mentioned, share it with other people to then for them to be able to run that same exact PDF report. Okay, here's a question. How does YCharts integrate report on private equity, real estate, and hedge funds? If there's something that YCharts doesn't have, if they don't have an index or something on related to some particular measure, if you have the data, you can load that in there as a custom security, right? And so that's what's really helpful. It's like YCharts says, hey, like use our engine to do whatever you want and you can just give us the data. So obviously if you don't have the data on the private equity, you know, that your client has or et cetera, then that's going to make it very difficult to like talk about that historical performance. But um, as you know, either Y charts has it, and if it doesn't, they give you the ability to add it in as like a custom security. And so when you're adding a client's portfolio, especially if they have something that's not like tickerized in some sense, then you, you're going to have to do something of that sort. Yeah, exactly. You can use a proxy. You can upload that custom security. Uh, we, we let you do that within the portfolios. I also see a question about uh, just, you know, are the model portfolio returns based on assumptions or are they specific to each firm? Uh, so we actually use our, we use the allocations that you put in to calculate the historical returns. So those are all based on the target weights that you're putting in or the actual weights you're putting in. And then we kind of backtrack that to, to uh, run your return and risk metrics. So if you have more questions on the, on the calculations there, we're basically just taking your weights and using that to extrapolate your uh, returns of your portfolio. I'm also seeing one about, can you add some of the scenario analysis into pr proposals, economic impacts, rate increases, et cetera? Yes, you can. So uh, if you're familiar with the scenario tool, uh, we have it right here under manage. You could actually run a scenario on a specific time frame and then put that scenario into your PDF report. And then we also have a really cool module called stress test, which I think I have within this uh, pre-downloaded report. So this stress test module, what it does is it runs your two portfolios against each other during different market environments. So you have like the 2022 inflation drawdown, you have the uh, coronavirus crisis, you know, oil price collapse, 2013 interest rate hike, if you want to compare that with the environment right now, uh, we have we have a lot of these uh, stress test environments, and you could put this into that proposal report as well. I guess there's All some right, Nick. on integrations. I don't know if you guys know about like Riskalyze integration. Someone asked about e-money. I don't know if you guys know if any of these are going to be built out. I think that's the only other thing I see in here. Um, yeah, definitely. So from an integration standpoint, we're, we're always adding more. Uh, this is our list of in integrated uh, different firms right now. So we have, uh, you know, Adapar, Ryan, Black Diamond, Schwab, Redtail, Pershing, and Virgil. So you can 
activate these integrations and connect connect the pipes between us and those platforms, pull in portfolio data from these platforms into Y charts to run that workflow. Uh, we're always looking to add add more integrations. So uh, I know I've, I've seen a few on on the list that are on our minds and. Uh, definitely keep an eye out for for different partners we add in the future. That's about risk profiling. You guys, is that like on the roadmap, or if you can tell us, <laughs> you guys plan on building a risk profiling tool? I mean, I guess that's a that's a great question. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something we've we've thought about. We haven't really uh, quite gone on that that journey yet. Mm -hmm. This the first step is to create this proposal report concept, and then. Uh, we're going to think through how we can enhance this and, and listen to uh, all the users' feedback. So uh, definitely reach out to us if you have great feedback on what you're looking for in a proposal report, and and we could think through it on our end. Yeah, okay. Someone asked if a strategy used in the model doesn't have a track record back to some prior period, how does the modeling account for that? I'm guessing it does, and it can only go back as far as the data goes, right? That's my understanding. Is that correct? Yeah, so... Uh, initially that is how it works, but you could also set up your model to either uh, basically add in a proxy before that date using a custom security, like you mentioned, or you can also set it so that uh, that holding that might only have like three years of history, it basically takes that holding out before that time frame and equally allocates that to the rest of your holding. So you can go back further than Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you can just make those assumptions and say, Hey, we'll, we're going to redistribute this to everything else. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. All right, Nick, I think, I think we can wrap up here. Um, but yeah, any, any other questions that we didn't get to, we'll, we'll definitely have your support contact to reach out and get back to you on that. Or if you wanted to reach out to us, we're happy to, uh, definitely answer any questions you have about the proposal tool, about anything else on on Y charts. We are happy to do that. Um, so, Nick, thanks a lot for joining today. I, I know your insights were were super valuable. Uh, we're excited about this proposal tool. If you're interested in uh, learning more, feel free to go to YCharts.com, reach out to us, uh, sign up for a free trial, and we can we can show you more. Uh, or about this tool. And if you're a current customer, you want to set up some time with us, feel free to do that as well. So thank you, Nick. And thank you everyone else for joining. Yeah. Thanks everyone for joining. Really appreciate it. Also, if you have any questions, even not related to this, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter um, at dollars and data or on Instagram at Nick Majuli. And I'm happy. I answer every DM. So feel free to send me one. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate it.